Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-black Training Grounds deck. This is a card that incentivizes us to play a whole bunch of creatures that have activated abilities since we can discount them by two generic mana, but this effect cannot reduce the mana that cost to less than one mana. So ideally our activated abilities cost three mana, that way in the case of Concealing Curtains we can activate it for just a single black if we have a Training Grounds out, so that can lead to turn one Curtains, turn two play Training Grounds, and transform curtains into the revealing eye in the very same turn, giving us a 3-4 with menace that can take a look at the opponent's hand and then take away a non-land card that the opponent can replace with a card of the top of their deck. So that's a very nice explosive start that gives us a ton of information as the game progresses. And then we also have some other creatures with activated abilities. A lot of these, as you will notice, can transform in some way. We've got a Captive Weird as well, a 1-3 Defender that can transform in the Completed Conjure for 3 and a Red Phyrexian. So that's always going to be 2 life in this deck. And then we get a 3-3 that can exile the top card of our library. And until the end of our next turn, we may play that card. So that can provide an extra bit of card advantage. And then with a Training Grounds out, that's just going to be 1 mana and 2 life. So very cheap to transform. Form. Then at 2 mana we get Surge Engine, a 3-2 also starts out as a defender, and then for a single blue cannot be blocked and loses defender, so it can actually apply a nice bit of pressure. And then for 2 and a blue, or in the case of Training Grounds on the battlefield, just a single blue can turn into a 5-4 afterwards, so it only takes a few attacks to close out the game. And then a final ability can potentially draw us 3 cards that we can activate once, so that can also potentially benefit from having multiple copies of Training Grounds in play, so we can discount it down to just double blue instead. And then a Fairy Mastermind has been a great addition as well, 2-1 with Flash and Flying, saying whenever an opponent draws their second card each turn, we get to draw a card. So if the opponent's playing a bunch of Knife creatures or other card draw effects, we can potentially pick up a few extra cards with the Mastermind, and we can also use the Activated Ability for a 3 and a blue, where each player draws a card. So if we activate this during the opponent's turn, they'll have drawn their second card for the turn, including their draw step. So we get to draw two cards, and the opponent only gets to draw one card, and with the Training Grounds it becomes a very easy to activate that ability multiple times. And then finally the Aetherblade Agent, 2 mana 1-1 one, one Death Touch, and then for 4 and a blue Phyrexian mana transforms into the Mind Stinger, a 3-3 with Death Touch, and whenever it deals common damage to a player or battle, we get to draw a card. It's also a very efficient threat that can generate card advantage. And then besides Training Grounds, it's also nice to have access to Omen Hawker, which gives us added redundancy when it comes to activating our various abilities. A 1 mana 1-1 one, one that can tap to add a colorless, and a blue mana that we can only spend to activate abilities. So also a very nice turn one play if we don't have a training ground. And then the rest of our deck is filled with cheap interaction. We've got three copies of Fading Hope, can both bounce an opposing creature as well as maybe save our creature from removal against control strategies. Two copies of Cutdown, doesn't always have a target in every matchup, but can be a very efficient removal spell if it lines up. And then the rest can also be important to take away some impactful non-creature spells from the opponents, in addition to the Curtains, which is also a great combo alongside Fading Hope. Maybe bounce an opposing creature back and then take it away with the Curtains. And then finally go for the throw it another nice removal spell. And then a mana base has a ton of blue-black dual lands. Don't want too many copies of Shipwreck Marsh, since we really want our lands to come into play untapped early, but it's still a nice bit of mana fixing. Dark Slick Shore is definitely the better land to start out with. And then Underground River, even if it costs a bit of life, can also be important to let us cast all these cheap blue and black spells. And then Abandoned Mire and the Soaring City offer a tiny bit more interaction. Overall, not a very high land count, since we're hoping to leverage Training Grounds and Hawker, and the overall curve of our deck is also pretty low. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. We've got our Training Grounds, a bit of interaction, and then plenty of creatures that benefit from the discount. Opponent on Esper, could be Esper Legends. And a turn to Rona confirms our suspicions. Okay, which creature do we want to play first is now the question. And uh, yeah, we've got a couple options. Surge Engine could already start attacking next turn. Agents we could already transform. And then maybe Fading Hope as well. Yeah, I kind of like the Agent here. Uh, 
and the mastermind will be nice as kind of a leftover to refresh our hand. So Rona gets to draw in this card. Discarding Iganjo. So no shortage of interaction in hand, supposedly. And Rafine gets to untap Rona. Can attack, potentially. Although they don't want to trade. Okay, so Agent can transform for just two mana and two life. Turns into a 3-3, three, three, so our opponent won't have an easy time blocking it. And then we'll still have Fading Hope, even though we can't target Rafine with a ward. I think it's worth it. Get to draw. And then Fading Hope on Rona might be fine here before our opponent gets a chance to untap. And our opponent discarded another channel land. Concealing Curtains is good too. Can play it and activate it for two mana total. Adeline's next. That one can hit pretty hard. So we'll have to decide here if we want to take out Rafine or Adeline. And then we could still play like a Surge Engine. And if we kill Adlin before attacking, we also play around another Iganjo, since it will only have the one legendary creature to discount it. So kind of like that idea. Okay, so I could still play and activate Concealing Curtains. See what they're working with. And our opponent did indeed have Igancho, and now Shieldred's gone. Can ambush the 1-1 one, one human if it attacks. Just Rafine attacking for now. Okay, can uh, play a Surge Engine, activate it potentially even twice. Um, or we can flash in a Mastermind as well. That will cost two mana to activate, but we can start by attacking and see what's up. Even though our opponent will have Iganjo to take out Mindstinger. So maybe we just attack with a Revealing Eye then. Damage happens. Play a Surge Engine. Activate. And we'll keep Fairy Mastermind available. Odin cycles Rafine's tower. So if we flash in Mastermind, we don't quite get to draw an extra card. If they cycled it in their turn, it would have worked. You can also flash it in in response to Rafine conniving. Okay, Shieldred's now potentially a bit painful. Rafine attacks. And then we'll flash in Mastermind. And a cutdown could come in handy, even though it doesn't take care of Rafine or Shieldred. We'll take three. And then we'll have to take two more here. Go for the throats. Perfect answer to Shieldred's. Opponent will still have Iganjo available for two mana. But uh, Shieldred's gotta go. And then what happens if we attack all out? Just have to watch out for another Shieldred next turn. Could also cut down the token. Opponent's kills Surge Engine, or maybe Mind Stinger if we don't level up Surge Engine. And then it would still take 8. And then I can flash in another Mastermind to maybe block Rafine if necessary. Kind of like that idea. Ok, 
Okay, opponent does take out Surge Engine. Still get to draw off a Mind Stinger. And then we can play Surge Engine, level it up. Or the safest play might be Mastermind, so we don't die to another Shieldred. So let's just pass. And then with double Mastermind, we also get to draw a few cards off for Fiend Conniving. Yeah, let's jump just to be safe. Even though if I take three and they play Shield Root, we wouldn't quite be dead yet. Yeah, actually, maybe taking three is fine now. Airtai can take out one of our creatures. Takes out their own Rafine. So I think that's uh, a pretty good sign for us here. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw and our hand seems keepable. Got a mix of uh, payoff cards and enablers, although we won't be able to play Hawker turn one, sadly, because of the tapped Marsh. Opponents maybe on a domain deck, so we can play Hawker and Curtains, and then next turn transform it. So a two mana Leyline Binding has been achieved. So first we might want to Duress before committing the mana to transform Curtains. And no Leyline Binding, but a Laydown Arms, Herd Migration, Invasion, also nice follow-up to a Stomper. So we have options. Currently Laydown Arms has three planes to go with it, so it's certainly active. And then double Herd Migration. Maybe the plan is just to take Invasion, and then take Stomper with the Transformed Curtains. Take away the ramp, basically. So... Hawker, Transform Curtains, and then I can still play another one. That sounds good. Now if we didn't try to play around Leyline Binding, then going for Transform Revealing Eye first, and then the rest would make more sense, because then we get to see an extra card that they draw. Which gives us a tiny bit more information. So your opponents discards herd migration to get a basic. By taking their ramp, we uh, buy ourselves more time in case they picked up some seven drops that they now wouldn't be able to cast right away. A sweeper like Sunfall could still be a concern. And our opponent gets rid of the untransformed revealing eye, which is interesting. Could imply that they have a sweeper they want to protect. I think I still have to commit surge engine. And then... I can transform it twice here, as opposed to playing two Surge Engines and turning those both into a Sweeper. Bonus still has a lot of life to work with, so we better close out the game quickly. Mirex can start making 1-1s. One and an Archangel of Wrath could be worse. Takes out Omen Hawker. Okay, so I can play Curtains and take a look, and then wait a turn on killing Archangel. That might be safer, even though our opponent gets to gain three. Since they can't really block here, so they don't have an incentive to stay back. But if that last unknown is something scary, could be bad for me. Or I could wait one more turn, since they wouldn't be able to cast her powerful 7 drops yet, give them an extra turn to maybe draw into one and take it away. You can also see the benefit of that instead. So if that's the case, play Surge Engine and go for the throat and hope there's no sweeper in our future. And I guess we could wait on go for the throat. Put it at 11. Pass it back.
Archangel attacks. They don't really have to think about it, so could be a bad sign. But of course, Surge Engine is unblockable, so okay, we get to untap. And uh, yeah, can level up twice, which would hit for 13 exactly. Pun can still gain three. But uh, what's the alternative? Play Curtains and activate, I guess. And then only hit for eight. And be able to take away one of their seven drops, potentially. Okay, they had a Leyline Binding, so that can exile Surge Engine now. And then do I even bother taking away Hurt Migration? Opponent's gonna activate it instead, so there's nothing for me to take. But we can hit for three, and then next turn transform twice, potentially hit for 11 exactly, and our opponent concedes. All right, so close one here against the domain deck, being able to take away all their key cards onto the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's got lots of interaction and an agent, but overall it seems to lack a bit of power and synergy. This is not much better, still lacking our enabler, but uh, I think we'll keep it and hope to find a way of discounting our activated abilities. And then one curtains will do. Turn to play Mastermind, and then turn three with a land we can transform. Okay, can play a Surge Engine now too, or we can flash in Mastermind, which is better if we are playing around an opposing counter spell. Indulgence, so if we flash in Mastermind, we actually get to draw here. Opponent might be on a Reanimator deck, and they just uh, discarded Lord Xander, so. Definitely seems to be the case. Found our training ground, so that's excellent. Want to try and deploy our hand as quickly as possible before Lord Xander makes his discard. The rest can take away our training ground, sadly. Although they might go for one of our removal spells, who knows. And training ground is gone. Okay, so can still transform our curtains to maybe have a look. Or we can deploy Surge Engine, level it up. Although if we can take away their only reanimation effect, that might be the way to go here. And we see a Liliana of the Veil. This figure, also an answer to our Mastermind. Thirst for Discovery we don't care about too much. Same with the Indulgence, since those are ways for Mastermind to draw an extra card. So... Yeah, maybe I do take this figure and leave them with a Graveyard Shift, which is pretty far away still at 5 mana. And they're also missing double black for Liliana. And that one seems easier to manage. Indulgence main phase to hit their land drop. We'll draw with Mastermind. And Toxril now discarded. That one's a bigger problem than Lord Xander. And Edict makes me sacrifice. Okay, so probably let go of Mastermind at this point. It's hard to say. I guess Mastermind could still draw with Thirst out, but Mastermind dies to Toxril right away. And our opponent's somewhat likely to bring it back next turn. Okay, Hawker gives us something to sack to Liliana if they don't Graveyard Shift right away. So hit for three. Can of course keep up Fading Hope to bounce Toxril before it applies minus one, minus one. So that might be the move. Just uh, play Surge Engine, play Omen Hawker, keep up Fading Hope. So let's see if Graveyard Shift can be played at instant speed here. Still only three out of five. So not quite. And we're going to make sure to set all the end of turn stops so we can Fading Hope before it's too late. All right, there's a Graveyard Shift for Lord Xander. Yeah, Fading Hope seems like a good solution here. And then just get rid of Cutdown. 
Hang on to go for the throats. Get to untap. Activate search engine. And activate again. Leaving up go for the throats while we hit for eight. And then next turn we could potentially draw extra cards as well. Thirst for discovery, that happens. Counter opponent, find a way out. Three mana, a Liliana doesn't do it. And our opponent explodes. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with our training ground, so we'll keep. And then how do we want to sequence is now the question. Probably get the training grounds out there before opponent plays a Thalia out of the soldier's deck. Turn two could go for agents. And then turn three can already transform it for just two mana and two life. Still play a captive weird. Or we could deploy more creatures first. If our opponent's on blue-white soldiers, they shouldn't really have a way of interacting with training grounds meaningfully. Opponent passes, probably with the reinforcements available. So if they're on reinforcements, maybe I just uh, play curtains and transform it now. Could also take a brutal cathar, which would be annoying. Could also play curtains, play weird. But this seems good. We get to have a look early on to uh, have a better idea how to sequence our spells. And there is reinforcements, or a point also playing with Protect the Negotiators, good to know. And a Sky Strike Officer, which we probably have to take so they can't start drawing a million cards. But yeah, the counter spells are going to be pretty difficult to play around here with double reinforcements going wide making tokens. At least our threats are relatively cheap, and Mastermind having Flash also helps. Another training grounds. So, can play maybe a captive weird, which the opponent may or may not counter. And then still flash in the mastermind, or if they tap out to counter here, I can play a surge engine, which is probably our best threat here. If captive weird resolves, I could consider attacking with revealing eye. The only concern is our opponent quadruple blocking with the reinforcements, but that's probably a fine trade since our opponent could find a Lord at any point, or a Brutal Cathar, to get rid of our Revealing Eye. So we'll hit for three. Also happy to trade for a Mishra's Foundry and a token. Opponent takes it. So now if our opponent goes for reinforcements end of turn, I'll respond with a Mastermind to have that in play at least. So now we have an Evasive Threats, some blockers on the ground to hold off the 1-1s. One and uh, yeah, we can do our best to play around Protect the Negotiators. Surge Engine would be a much faster win condition, especially with Training Grounds out. But Mastermind's not bad either, since we can draw extra cards with it. And yeah, our opponent explodes. They can't handle the training grounds opening. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems very nice. Turn one, probably go for curtains. So turn two, we can grounds activate curtains and get in for three right away. Opponent on a red deck. So having double underground river could come back to bite us a little bit. Two mana on one. Okay, the rest will certainly come in handy, but for now, let's get this Curtains transformed. And we may decide to leave it back here if our opponent can play a hasty 2-drop. See Swiss Spear, Lightning Strike, and a Scamp. So, yeah, could keep Curtains back to block a Swiss Spear. A Lightning Strike and answer to Mastermind, which is something we might want to take, although the rest can also answer it. So, close call. Maybe we don't take anything, and then, yeah, maybe I do still attack, turn this into a bit of a race. Opponent goes with maybe a Scamp first and then Swiss Spear to get the extra counter on Scamp, which we can then Fading Hope. 
And then the rest takes care of Lightning Strike. Sure. Next turn I might have to keep revealing Eye back. So it's Swiss Spear first. Makes the Fading Hope on it a little bit less effective. Okay, Captive Weird's a good one. So can play that, transform it for just one mana and two life. And uh, still have the Fading Hope and Duress available. And then we probably want to activate before playing a land in case we exile one. Okay, that works. Comes into play untapped. And then now Duress, I think, makes sense. See, now here is Warcrafting and Lightning Strike. Well, the Warcrafting probably even better than the Lightning Strike here. So I'll take that. And then Revealing Eye probably has to hang back since they can kill the Conjurer. Don't want to take too much damage here. If they picked up a 1 mana instant, Swiss Spear could grow twice, which is bad. Conjure on Kumano makes sense. And that's maybe it. Could also go Revealing Eye on Swiss Spear and then basically trade Revealing Eye for Swiss Spear and Lightning Strike. Although if they picked up a play with fire, then Swiss Spear survives. Although we do get to basically untap with our opponent empty handed with a Mastermind to draw extra cards. If I block Scamp, then Scamp can finish off our Conjurer, and of course Lightning Strike can also finish off Revealing Eye, so that's no good. Yeah, there's not too many 1-mana instants outside of Play With Fire in the red deck. So I'm hoping they just want to trade Lightning Strike for Revealing Eye. Alright, antagonize their Scamp. That hits for 5. And they can sacrifice it to deal five more. So now we're actually dead to the lightning strike next turn. That was certainly unexpected. Okay, I guess our opponent found a way. So it can hit for six. Can bounce Swiss Spear, but it doesn't matter. Opponent can just kill us with a burn spell. All right, fair enough. Good to see a pretty unusual play here, but that explains why the scamp's in the deck. So, yeah, had we known what was happening, we probably would have taken a few different lines of play, but so it goes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. No cost reducer or training grounds here, so let's take a mulligan. This one doesn't have a cost reducer, but double curtains and agent could work out. Could also get rid of one Curtains to have the guaranteed curve of Curtains, Agent, Transform Curtains. Although I think we're more likely to pick up an extra land along the way. Might still keep the double black. Since flooding can be a real concern. Turn 1 Skrelv. So Mono White Aggro potentially. And a Vanguard, so humans aggro. The rest unlikely to find a target. Although they might have the uh, one mana sorcery still. Okay, what's next? Good Fading Hope the Vanguard now, although for now I can just block it. And I guess uh, Skrelv is there to protect it too, so it's not like Fading Hope is going to be all that useful. So maybe go for a Surge Engine. One Surge Engine becomes bigger, turns into a 5-4. Okay, picked up Training Grounds, excellent. So play Training Grounds, can transform Curtains if we'd like. Even their opponent's stuck on two lands, so maybe I'm helping them find a land drop this way. And yeah, we see double Knight Errant, double Adlin, and a Brutal Cathar, which is probably what I have to take here. And uh, if I attack, opponent plays Adlin. The token also gets pumped, so it would be able to attack past Surge Engine. Although I suppose then we could trade for Vanguard. 
I think Surge Engine is still more valuable. So I'll just hang back. So time for Adeline, most likely. Nope, Puno goes for a Knight Errands, but can only find two mana creatures with it. And they did have to tap Skrelv in the process. So now I can actually cut down the Vanguard, which is pretty good value. And uh, could bounce Knight Errant as well. This is certainly happening. Bouncing Knight Errant turns this into kind of a tempo game, which is maybe what we want with a Surge Engine active. Sadly, Surge Engine itself can't attack, missing a land drop here. So another Knight Errant. Probably should have played Officer first to Convoke. So what's next? Probably Transform Engine twice to keep up the pressure. Now engine is blue, so Skralv can potentially name blue to attack past it. But uh, it's probably going to be turning sideways for the most part. There's Adlin. And Officer. Opponent could still Convoke if they wanted to. But our opponent's going to pass. Okay, so hit for 5. Play another Surge Engine. And then we'll have two lethal threats. So yeah, a bit of a strange game. Opponents seem to be the ones stuck on two lands at first, but in the end we were the ones that never found a third land. Adversary could be a good one, pumping the team. Although the life gain doesn't matter when we can attack past it. So just need to survive one attack. And uh, only need to keep our tapped surge engine alive. So it should not be too difficult. Can eat the officer, can chump Adlin, take 7, 8, 9. And that should do it. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is good, not great, because of the tapped shipwreck marsh. We can't quite curve out the way we want to, but still gonna keep. Training grounds, an excellent pickup as well. Do I still play turn one omen hawker? Or do I go for Training Grounds? Let's go with Omen Hawker. If it eats a removal spell, that's fine. Then maybe Curtains survives. So opponent's Band Colors picked up a nice untapped land. So now can play Weird Transform it. Can play Weird, play Training Grounds, Transform. So that's maybe the way to go here. Could also just play Curtains and then next turn transform, but then we're kind of wasting the Hawker's mana in a way. Could get punished by a counter spell now on the training ground since then I can't transform weird anymore, but nope, that resolves. And found a swamp which we can play next turn. Okay. So not a bad first two turns. Opponent uses Herd Migration to get a basic, so it is a 5-color domain deck after all. And a Stomper on 3. So, can play Curtains, transform it, maybe take away a Sweeper. Although, wouldn't be able to play Mastermind then. I think it's still worth it to have a look. Okay, see a uh, Volcanic Spite, Archangel, and Binding. Yeah, there's a few problem cards there. Archangel might be the biggest problem card, since it not only kills a Mastermind potentially, but it also blocks it. 
and then we'll hit for four. So our opponent's hand is now all answers, but no real threats. Let's try and keep it that way. Opponent passes with all their mana available. So now I could play Masterminds, activate it twice even. Leyline Binding goes for Revealing Eye, most likely. And then it could still take out the Conjurer as well. Okay. Really need Mastermind to stick the landing. And find us more Revealing Eyes. The rest could be good. Another Stomper can enable the first one, so now there's two 4-4s four to deal with. Cut down, not great in this matchup. So we'll take four. Well, that could play Mastermind Activate and still maybe find a Go for the Throat. Unlikely that our opponent can still cast something with the remaining mana, although not impossible, there is Ossification that comes to mind. Okay, found a Surge Engine instead. And a Go for the Throat, okay. So kill Stomper. And Surge Engine could be an excellent win condition. Duress can have a look. Start there. Herd Migration gains three, gets a land. And yeah, just a bunch of lands in hand. So play Engine. Let's use Underground River. This one we can level up at instant speed, so no need to do it now. So we can level up Engine twice and draw with Mastermind. Ooh, also Vacation. Okay. Likely goes for the Engine, so no point in activating it now. Could draw with Mastermind in case I find Fading Hope to bounce my own engine. Maybe worth it, even though I give the opponent a chance to play something pretty expensive, at least not a 7-drop. And there's Fading Hope. But now a Binding as well. I think Saving Surge Engine is still worth it. Since it actually can uh, close out the game in a hurry. Whereas Mastermind does draw us two cards versus the opponent only one card. But uh, giving the opponent extra cards is also dangerous when they could find one of their powerful finishers. So now we need to redeploy Surge Engine. But it can also eventually draw us a few extra cards. Take four. And at the very least, they can make a 1-1. Cycles headquarters. Okay, so play Captive Weird. Transform it. Curtains can transform. Opponent's got nothing. And then play Engine and use that floating mana to level it up. Can level up again in the opponent's turn to make it a 5-4. Okay, fingers crossed that our opponent doesn't top deck anything too devastating. Yeah, Atraxa, that's uh, pretty devastating. On the bright side, they don't have white mana untapped to play a removal spell afterwards. But now, uh, with our opponent still at 20, it's going to be pretty difficult to overcome the card advantage from an Atraxa, especially when they find a backup. I'll double block Stomper if they attack. Another Surge Engine helps, but need to find an answer to Atraxa while they have another one in hand, which always feels bad. So, let's level up. Cut down doesn't quite do it. So I can play another engine. Okay, 
hit for five, but this is not a race we're winning. So yeah, if you're playing this deck in a best of three setting and facing the domain deck, I would recommend adding a few counter spells. This Daneful Stroke comes to mind as a way to counter all the expensive four and seven drops. Cut down doesn't quite cut it. Also, vacation gets rid of Surge Engine. And yeah, opponent rightfully goes for the fresh one, which can still draw three cards. And then they can hang on to the second Atraxa until we answer the first one, since we're not beating it as is. And double block. And our opponent had another Leyline Binding left over as their top deck. Makes sense. Well, we tried our best. But uh, yeah, Atraxa over the top is going to be a pretty powerful card in standard going forward. So you better have a plan to beat it. So Mastermind can draw, but I'm not sure what we're hoping to find at this point. A bunch of lanes. That's not gonna do it either. Okay, hit for five and then uh, I think I'm ready to throw in the towel. And Mirex makes a token. Hopefully we get to see an Atali enter the battlefield at least. Archangel of Wrath instead can also end the game here. Alright, GG's. Let's cut down our own creatures. Deny the life gain. But draw with Mastermind first. Okay, we weren't going to draw out of it anytime soon. But this also illustrates some of the awkward draws late game when you already have a training ground. Don't really want to draw a 1 mana 1-1. One, one. Alright, so we got to see our blue-black training grounds activated ability deck in action. And yeah, overall it's a pretty original deck that I haven't really seen anyone play before. And it can have some very explosive starts, especially with uh, turn 1 curtains transforming on turn 2 thanks to a training grounds. That's the power of training grounds in this strategy. But that also illustrates one of the problems with the deck. If you don't draw your training grounds or early omen hawker, then the deck can feel a bit sluggish and the overall card quality cannot really keep up with most of the meta decks in standard. So I would not recommend this deck for the ranked ladder, but if you happen to have a couple training grounds, it's a fun deck to try in the play queue. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. Thank you.